We are back on Inside Politics. I, our guest today, Dr. James Hildreth. He's the president and CEO of Meharry Medical College, also a member of the city's coronavirus task force. Uh, Dr. Hildreth, um, we've talked about a lot of sort of scary negative things in the first part of this. There also was a study that came out in Great Britain this week that's a steroid-based drug that's been pretty readily used in a lot of different ways, but it could be, it's found to be very helpful to COVID-19 patients, particularly those that are quite ill or on respirators. It's not a vaccine, but is it a pretty encouraging development? I, I, I think so, because at the end of the day, what matters is how many lives we save that otherwise would have been lost to COVID-19. What dexamethasone does, and then it's really a steroid anti-inflammatory uh, drug. It seems to dampen down the inflammatory response to the virus. And when viruses cause pneumonia, and sometimes when they elicit an immune response, the immune response itself starts to do damage that otherwise wouldn't have happened. And what the dexamethasone is doing is damping down the inflammatory response. And that tends to let people survive the virus better. So I think they found that it reduced the, the death rate among people really sick by 30%, which is quite significant, really. So it has the potential to save a lot of lives, especially those individuals who have really severe disease. Uh, you know, those are the ones who typically will die from this. If they're on a, a ventilator, they need that kind of support. And what this steroid seems to do is to, again, turn down the inflammation to the point that these people can survive better. And that's that's clearly a, a really good, hopeful development. It has to be confirmed because it's, the study was in the UK, but I think many doctors around the world is gonna be trying this now. We'll see pretty quickly whether or not this holds up. But it certainly is a promising positive news in the middle of a lots of gloomy news. So I agree with you on that. Uh, Dr. Hildreth, uh, I've looked at the numbers throughout this, and I'm certainly no expert, but it seems to me we do not quite have the, as high, thank goodness, a death rate in, in, in the Tennessee or in, the, or in Nashville as a lot of other places have had. Is there a reason for that? Is the virus different in different parts of the country? I think it, what it comes down to is that if you look at the fatality rate among different age groups, clearly those who are 65 and older, really 70 and older for sure, have a much higher death rate from the virus than younger folks do. And if you look at the age distribution of cases in Nashville, for example, it's clearly skewed toward younger age groups. And that probably accounts for the fact that the fatality rate here in Nashville, and to some extent in Tennessee, is the same explanation, is lower. And what I'm really pleased about is, as you know, the virus is devastating uh, minority communities around the country. But here in Nashville, we still have a significant fatality rate. I think it's about 3%, but that's much lower than it is for minority groups in some other cities like uh, New Orleans, Chicago, Detroit, and others. Um, and so the overall death rate in Nashville is just over 1%. I think that's still the number. And it's 3% for African-Americans. So there's still a disparity, but the, but the absolute value of, of people dying, the number of people dying, is lower than it is in other cities, as you point out. Uh, and I think my own personal opinion is that's because we as a community have taken the mitigation step seriously compared to some other cities where people have not. Dr. Hillis, as we're seeing the spike in cases recently, it does appear that our hospital bed capacity and our ICU bed capacity has increased. And so far, we seem to be not uh, having the curve overtake us at this point. We're staying under it at this point. But that can be kind of fragile. Are you concerned if we do, we do and that could happen pretty quickly, are you concerned we may have to go back in Nashville to phase one or even go back to where we were uh, in the stay home order? Well, I think that to the extent that Nashvilleians continue with that same focus that they've had over the last uh, few months, that we will not have to go back to phase one. But clearly, if we take our foot off the gas pedal, so to speak, and ease up on the mitigation, we may actually find ourselves having to take some more drastic uh, steps, including maybe going back to staying at home. But I think if we as a community, as a, as a city, as a county, continue it again with the focus we've had, I don't see that happening. So far, hospital capacity is good. ICU availability is, is still pretty good. So again, <laughs> we've done pretty well, all things considered. And if we keep our focus, keep our attention on doing the things that we need to do, we'll be okay. And there's one thing, as I put it out the other day, 
that if all of us did it, I think we'll be okay. And that is wearing a mask or face covering when we're out with other people. That one thing above all other things at this point would be most helpful in making sure we don't have to go back to where we were. And I hope people will heed that advice uh, and do that. And if they do it, well, I think we'll be okay. There seems to have been a lot of support for the shutdown orders when they first came in, but as the economy has continued to crash, that seems to have been tempered a little bit. There may also be some virus fatigue uh, setting in. What is plan B if we don't, if we have to go back, if we have to do something, but we can't go back to the shutdowns? Uh, well, I mean, I don't really know what the plan B is, and I'm hoping we won't need a plan B. And I get it, the, the business owners, uh, you know, they need to get their businesses open again. We need to get the economy going again. But if we're gonna do that, we have to have the discipline to acknowledge that the virus is still a threat. And as we go back to a new normal, we have to acknowledge that the virus is there and do the things that we need to do to keep the virus under control. So there is a way to, to reopen the economy gradually, but that's only gonna work if we as a community members feel comfortable patronizing those businesses. Because again, I think Nashville citizens have an acute awareness of the virus. And I think that they are by their own choices, making it clear to the business owners that we're not gonna patronize you if you don't take the step necessary to protect us. So if we all do our part, I think we can go back to a new normal, but we have to be knowledgeable and disciplined about the virus. And that's the key to the whole thing. If we all do it, I think we'll be fine. Dr. James Hildreth of Harry Medical College is our guest. He's also a member of the city's coronavirus task force. Back to continue our conversation with the doctor on the other side of this break.